Getting startup secrets. Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one. You are now plugged in. Hey guys, and thank you for tuning in to episode 206 of the Plug and Play Pax Bound podcast. I'm your host, Zach, and alongside me, as always, is Tim. Welcome, minions. So, as I just said, we are Pax Bound, so this episode is going to be a little bit condensed, um, but don't fret, we'll probably have some random shit going up, maybe through Pax, or right after Pax, or sometime in there, like, yeah, we'll figure it out. Anyways, Tim, what have you been up to this week? Well, first of all, we've been pouring a glass of this blended Canadian whiskey from Costco. It's very good, actually. I promise to let you try. Um, it is a blended whiskey. It's I think I think they're going for the style of Crown Royal, honestly. They are. It's definitely not a maker's mark. No, no, no. It's a blended Canadian for one thing. But it is oak cast aged for six years in white um, oak. And it's got a 91 on some tasters panel. I mean, so it's, it's not bad. It's smooth. Um, it's a huge bottle for 30 bucks. This is what I consider my daily whiskey. And I just waited to open this bottle so I could bring it to you and let you try it. I since appreciate you, it. Since you were curious about Cheers. it. Cheers. Cheers. So, yeah. If I'm just coming over for a long day of work, don't really care. I just want a quick nightcap. This is what I go to. Yeah, it's not bad. I like it a lot, actually. It's pretty smooth. Yeah. It's uh, not as sugary as Crown, though, which I, no, I, I like. A, it's got a different, completely different taste profile, yeah, it in does. my opinion. Yeah, it does. It really does. But I think it's a, very comparable as far as style. So, like, if you're trying to describe it to somebody, that's what I usually say. But, yeah. Um... So other than going to Costco to pick you up booze, I've been up to a couple things. Sweet. Um, we went and did our probably our last. Well, before I get to that, well, should I do that first or the other thing first? Um. Mm. Well, I prefer that. Well, the other we, thing first. No, I'd prefer the uh, Adventure, Adventure Time Tuesday. Time, yeah. So for the third or fourth year running, I'm not even sure now. We went to the Haunted Enchanted Forest. Okay. This and, is the creepy Disney World knockoff. Yes. And this time, thanks to my brother, um, I was t- trying out the camera, one of the cameras, because there's now, I think, four cameras we're going to be using for packs. Jesus Christ. Thanks to Q. We'll get to that later. We need to talk about this part together, The your number two. Okay. That'll be at the end of what we will okay. do. Um, anyway, new camera, trying it out, shoulder mount. Um, so I kind of followed my kids with it. This is the one that I'm going to be using at PAX? Yes, that would, what I would like to do. I'd like to do a similar shot, as, but, well, we'll talk about it when we Yeah, yeah. Um, Maybe this time I don't have to actually guard the son of a bitch because it'll be on me. Yeah, it's a lot easier. Um, so yeah, we went and kind of did our favorite things. Did the Legend of I think it's called Mondor. It sounds just like Mortar, but it's different. Yeah, it's like a little shooter game. My kids got like a hundred and fifty, and and I got seven hundred and oh, I got a picture here somewhere so I can tell oh, you the shit, exact. Sweet. So I was do they were in the front seat, so they each had one gun, right? And I was in the back seat, and they had like the hundred and fifty to hundred and I think maybe one of them had 230. This is my score. 750 and 720. And 750 was my left hand. Jesus and I'm right-handed. Christ. So I was kicking their asses, as usual. Um, so yeah, picture that. It's like, fun It's fun looking at the same pose. The witch deep-throated you? Yeah, the, there's a cavern in the witch's mouth. And it's funny going back at the previous years and seeing like how much taller they are in the witch's mouth. But um, This might be the last year my 13-year-old daughter enjoys... The park unironically, and even then she was like taking lots of Snapchats of all the exhibits to her friends. Like, w- there's Rip Van Winkle on this on the um on the side of the hillside. She's like, okay. she's like snapping hashtag literally me, you know, just just the, just yeah, you know, just, get that just age. teenager shit. Yeah, no, my son still enjoys. He's like, he's like, this is fucking awesome. Yeah. And your sister's like, or your daughter's like, kill me now. And then uh, on the way back, we saw this. This uh, camel truck. Camel toe? The yeah. camel toe truck? Yeah. Was, That's fucking weird. It's like a horse trailer, but there's a camel in it, and it said camel toe on the back. I thought that was pretty funny. That's quite odd. Yeah, so that was our Adventure Time Tuesday. Probably the last one, although maybe not, because... We're on strike, bitches! Yeah, I'll let you talk about that later. I mean... The other thing I did this week was took my daughter to the range, and I think that will come into play... What is a range? A shooting range. It's a place where you discharge firearms. Okay. And um, shoot paper targets. Okay, so, so like what type her, of firearms? Well, more importantly, I took her, uh, That sounds a little too big. Okay. Um, so this was her first time handling a firearm. I was con- considering uh, teaching her the basics myself, but I thought I'd go with a licensed instructor. He was really good. Retired Camus uh, deputy. 
um, very patient. Um, I actually learned a lot for myself. Cause I've never taken a like actual class in marksmanship. And, More like that. Uh, that's a 1911 close three feet. No, that's that's way too big caliber. Three foot. What what caliber? 1911. Yeah, those are 45. So you think I'm gonna let my daughter start with a 45? Maybe. No. Okay, so it was, it was a three hour class, two hours classroom. And, of course, the very first topic was safety, and then there was cleaning your firearm, and then um, the part that I got the most out of was, like, stance and grip, and um, yeah. and how you're supposed to sight the weapon. Like, I've always, like, not known what I'm supposed to focus on, and now I, I know, so I actually, okay. I actually learned some stuff there. And there'll probably be some out there listening that disagree with me teaching my daughter how to use a firearm, but I'm a firearm owner, and I have been for the last 20-something years. And I know that violence has really changed the topic of gun ownership in our country. But I think there's a place for gun ownership. Um, I think there's a... I want my daughter to respect firearms and mm -hmm. not treat them like a toy or... A, a, they're, they're not BB guns. Or a vehicle for revenge. Um, and so, yeah, I thought it was important for her to have this experience. I plan to take her to the range uh, with me now that she has the basics and knows how to treat them safely. And... Uh, Go shooting with her. Um, for for this trip, we uh, we used a nine millimeter. Um, I can't remember what make at the moment. Beretta. I don't think it was. I, Damn, that's what I have. And uh, I brought my um, Smith and Wesson uh, service revolver. It's a police service revolver from the seventies. And the uh, range instructor was really impressed with it actually because it was you know an old police revolver. Yeah. He's like, wow, people don't shoot revolvers anymore. And uh, but yeah, it's really it's really cool to shoot. It's very accurate and very simple as far as a firearm okay we don't have all the parts that can jam into semi-auto um, my daughter's a great shot she got a really nice tight grouping with a few exceptions where she was anticipating the trigger pull um, it was a good experience and i look forward to shooting with her again sweet but i think this topic will come up again later when we talk about news and um yeah i'd rather not but okay yeah. um well this weekend i barked us the whole side of my wall like that surrounds my property okay how many yards of bark dust did you get? Five and a quarter. Didn't we use like bark dust yards as some kind of like currency to figure out something else? I think we did last time. Oh, damn, I can't remember what it was now. I can't remember what it, it was. was. kind of funny. It was. Can't remember what um, it was. So how long did that take you? Um, I did it. I started at two o'clock in the afternoon. I worked till six. So that's four hours, and then probably another like four the next day. So maybe this like is a little bit cooler. This eight week. to ten hours. That's the reason why I did it now. Yeah. Um. So it's my my whole entire property is now done. All there is is just walking by and picking out the occasional weed. Nice. So, um, I'm pretty stoked about that. Bark dust is fucking expensive though. Yeah. Um. Anyways, other than that, I've been preparing because my wife is a teacher. Um. And all of the area where we live, the whole entire county. Um, all the teachers unions have agreed on a certain number range that they will not accept a new contract unless they're met with that percentage of a raise. And, uh, so that's why my kids were not in school today. And that's yeah. why I said, maybe this week won't be the last adventure time Tuesday. Yeah, well, from what I've heard from my wife's school district, the district isn't even going to offer them anything more than what they have. They're not willing to negotiate for a minimum of two weeks. Awesome. There's going to be some pissed off parents out there. Going to be some really pissed off parents. I've heard there's school board members um, and teachers that have gotten death threats. Which well, is... my wife got a couple of fingers today out on the picket line and a couple of fuck yous and stuff like that going by. So I was hearing stories, not about now, but of past strikes. A um, guy was talking about people throwing beer cans at teachers on strike. and It's real classy. Like These are people like watching your kids. Like Yeah. That's awesome. That guy probably doesn't have a kid. No, he was, t he was telling the story. He didn't. He didn't do it. No, no, no. I mean, the person who threw the beer can probably didn't oh. have a kid, or his kids are all grown up and he's a crotchety no. old man. It could be just a pissed off parent. Yeah, that, I mean, it could that, be that is just irritated. I, I would his like kids to. Home. I would like to think that parents aren't going to be physically violent towards my wife because I will shoot their ass, okay. and that's on a podcast. Hey, what color is my shirt? Red. Okay, point that thing somewhere else, Mister. Well, so the last thing. Yeah. Is I've been fucking flooded with goddamn PAX emails every day. And you know what's really you know what grind, You know what grinds my gears what? this year? What? This time if I don't respond to some motherfucker, they don't just send a new email. 
They replied to their own email, so it looks like I fucking messaged them. <laughs> and I'm like, you son of a bitch. So I've had to go through, the past like two days, I have literally gone through like close to 120 emails. Then I'm like, I've already deleted you. Why are you emailing me again? I almost missed an important uh, scheduling email because... Because um, it said re on it? No, just because I got so many. Um, like you said, but I'm glad I saw that one. I'll bitch about that later. So we've both been trying to pack for packs, and uh, Q threw me cu- curveball at the last minute. Q was like, hey, Tim, take my dick. Kind of. He's like, hey, what are you doing Friday? And I'm like, at this certain time, I'm like, well, I'm doing this. He's like, well, we've got this developer we're close with. He really wants an interview. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll push this around and do it. He's like, got back to me. Like, well, that spot's taken now. Can you do Saturday? I'm like, fuck you. Like, I have so many things on my schedule already. But yeah, I can yep. do it on Saturday. So he books it for me. He still hasn't told me what it is. I get the email um, today, and it's hands-on with Travis Strikes again, No More Heroes, and an interview with Suda51, legendary developer Suda51, who started Grasshopper Manufacturer. Um, also, and yeah, and Q wants me to get a video interview with this guy. Q, do we have like a video like set up? Not really. No. I'm going to cobble something together with like bits and pieces of stuff we have and hope it works. Um, uh, yeah, I'm My sorry, Pixel man. has a great camera. I'm going to mount it on that weird thing. We... I can give you the other Pixel. I don't need the other Pixel. I mean, I guess. I mean, I'm, Doesn't I'm just saying I could give it to you for... Then we have to worry about how to upload it if it's not connected to any services. It's connected to the Wi-Fi hotspot that we're going to be having. But, yeah, but how are you going to move that file? Through the Wi-Fi hotspot? To where? To what a, service? To a drive? It's connected to my Gmail, which is connected to our plug-and-play drive. Okay, this is too technical. Anyway, I'm, I've got... Okay, I've you got just a, you just do you, boo. I know, but it's gonna be. I'm going to be walking up to this like with a couple bags unfolding all my junk and like setting up this contraption. It's like a Frankensteinian monster. I'm like, hey, so hey, let's talk about your game. Yeah! It's going to be awesome. I'm not at all stressing about it. I'm stressing about it. I got you uh, something to help de-stress. So, well, thanks. Yeah, thanks for that. You're welcome. Um, so I haven't started packing yet. I, uh, I on the other hand, have I, I've really tried to accommodate um, getting everything done. Um, last year, I kind of I didn't I didn't drop the ball on anything. I got everything done, but it wasn't done in a timely manner that was okay with me. Um, so I I blocked out. Uh, potentially or intentionally uh, some good time to decompress and to um, write articles and everything else, edit video and stuff like that um, at PAX. I don't have anything that's as mind blowing as you. I'm extremely excited. I'm not going to lie for the leisure suit, Larry. That'll be fun. Um, I played the original one. I'm surprised I, that you played any point and click adventure, honestly. Um, I didn't beat them. I really got into Leisure Suit Larry Magna Cum Laude. Did mm-hmm. you ever play that one? No. That was like a... Uh, it was like a 360 era, right? Yeah, and it was uh, it was originally PC, and it was basically Ocarina of Time graphics um, where you just literally walk around an open campus and just try to fuck, fuck every professor and college girl there. And there was like... There was, like, DLC. It was the very first DLC. If you paid, like, an extra $2 or something, it, like, took all the, like, censor bars off. <laughs> so. Ooh, I can see the whole polygon. Yeah. Wow. I mean, they were detailed, but they, it was, yeah. But um, I'm excited for that. Actually, I'm looking at the list right now. I'm probably most excited to learn about Torchlight Frontiers. Cool. I don't know if I should have said that. I don't think that's a surprise. I don't think there's anything embargo. Well, when does this go up? Saturday or Sunday? Saturday or Sunday. It'll be the interview will be done by then. Other people will be tweeting about yeah. it by then. So even if it's embargoed, um, you're fine. There's another cool one that re- really re- is reminiscent of uh, Pilot Wings. I'm hoping you're going to go to. It doesn't look like you have anything within like three hours of it. So I was planning on going to that too with you. Sweet. Um, but other we'll talk than... about our schedule later. Yeah. Thing I'm I'm sort of excited. I'm also terrified about the Suda 51 interview. I'm a little less terrified about meeting Swery 65. And it's kind of funny to me how they have their similar handles. Yeah. Um, with the name and then the the numbers. But, yeah, but he's. So I mean, what you're saying is I should become the Dark Legend sixty nine. Yeah, I think your first name should be shorter though, like DL sixty nine. DL sixty nine. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, so they they are both weird Japanese directors. That's about their only similarity. Their games are very different. Gotcha, gotcha. But I'm actually a little less apprehensive about Swery because he's a he's a pretty chill guy. Um, Suda Fifty War is a little more Type A, like go go go, yeah. My question: mm-hmm. They're both organically Japanese, or not organically, but like from ja- Japan. So I know Swery often uses an interpreter. I'm not sure about Suda Fifty One. If that's okay. what you're getting at. Yeah, that's, this is um, exactly so Swery completely at. understands English and can speak it slowly. Um, he just, so you can talk to him. And he'll understand everything. Understand everything. And he he could reply somewhat, but it's just like hard for him to you know f- form complex sentences, especially if he's talking in detail about, I don't know, some kind of game system or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's usually a translator involved. I'm not, I don't know about Suda51, honestly. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm hoping, honestly... Since the Studio 51 is in the Nintendo area, that that interview will be short. that will just have enough time to set up my stuff and get, like, two questions answered, all right, and then move on. Do you know what game he is? I do. Okay. What's the uh, game called? Or can you say the game? I... Okay, let's I, not. Never mind. It's I, fine. I, we'll talk kinda, about it at PAX. I, I kind of just did a while back ago. What? Travis Starks again, No More Heroes. Oh, I didn't recognize that as a game. Um, I'll show you some video later. You'll, okay. You'll get a kick out of it. All right. Um, do you want to talk some news? Let's talk some news. It's depressing, but let's talk some news. So, Tim, this is normally the uh, part of the podcast where you said it's going to be depressing news, and I would make a comment, but uh, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, so this... I'm, I'm not going to lie. Hmm. I'm a little bit on edge. Okay. So this, yeah, so some people worried for us going to PAX, and that's because on Sunday, uh, someone at a Madden uh, tournament opened fire on his fellow competitors and killed two of them and injured, I think, 12? 11 Something 12. like that, yeah. Yeah, before killing himself. So we play video games for fun, and I understand esports can get competitive, but if you're at the point where you're so like distraught from losing, you literally want to kill your opponents, it's just time to step away, man. And seek some help. Talk to somebody. But that's why I was talking earlier about what, this is kind of a weird week for me. This is something I planned with my daughter a long time ago. And we did this before the shooting happened. But shootings are happening all the time in America now. Yeah. And that's why I you know, brought up my values around guns and the fact that I think there's a place for guns. But I think it's too easy to get access to them. And I think we need to look at the laws we have. Um, I think everyone should have a training that like my daughter had before they touch the one. They shouldn't be able to just walk into a Walmart and just buy one willy nilly. And there's a lot of people that don't believe that. Yep. I think it's an inalienable right. And my it, it's not. It shouldn't be a right. It should be a privilege. I, like you should have to do some sort of class. But then once that class is completed, they don't. I I don't know. It's a touchy subject. It's a very touchy subject in America, but. The fact is that these episodes of Violent are happening with greater regularity. You really can't argue that. No, right? there's no arguing that. America is literally in an epidemic of mass shootings. And it's it's almost like, well, there hasn't been any school shootings for a while. I'm like, yeah, motherfucker, that's because we're in summer break. We're on summer break. But we yeah. still found a way to have a shooting. Cause this Two ma- of them. This- well, we, wasn't, uh, oh no, Vegas was after, it was, never mind, okay. But Vegas yeah. was during school. So, there's a lot of... Um, Tournaments at PAX, a lot of gaming events. There's so. a lot of tournaments outside of PAX. Yes. That so. don't... That, 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 we're going to one. Right. And it literally cannot afford to have armed security guards. So, and But almost immediately, people were like texting me like, Hey, are you going to be safe at PAX? You know, and and uh, obviously, I, I appreciate obviously, it. Obviously, people were asking the organizers because... Uh, this article at comicbook.com from our friend Robert Workman was um, saying that um, the organizers of of PAX, well, here, I'll just read their statement because it's interesting what they say and they don't say. First and foremost, our hearts go out to all those impacted by a horrific senseless act of violence in Jacksonville, Florida on Sunday. The entire gaming community is affected by this tragedy. The safety of our attendees, exhibitors, and staff is paramount to Read Pop and Penny Arcade. As PAX has grown in popularity, we have responded with the addition of increased private security, law enforcement, and other personnel, each of whom are on-site all times during our events. 
As a rule, we do not publicly announce or discuss the details of our security program in order to maintain its effectiveness. However, we work closely with the Washington State Convention Center, Private Security, Seattle Police Department, and the federal law enforcement authorities to identify risks, assess them, develop our comprehensive security protocols for PAX West. We have in place extensive proactive measures, some that are visible during PAX events and many that are not. We are always working to approve our security plans and, if need be, adjust them to ensure that we are doing all that we can to make PAX West and all PAX events a safe and secure environment for the community. Across 15 years of PAX events, we have provided a safe and welcome environment for more than a million attendees to come together for the love of gaming. We are ensuring we adhere to that tradition at PAX West 2018. So, we're going to be safe, but we're not going to tell you how. That's what I got out of that. Some of my friends were like, were felt better about that after that statement. I'm like, ah, I've been to PAX. It's a very porous environment, and there's not a lot of exits. It's hard to get out of the main PAX. And there's many are ancillary. There's the hotels. There's... A lot of offsite events. There is a that lot of offsite places. events that have very minimal security, or none, none or that's, none, none that's visible anyway. Yes, for sure. Um, you know, maybe cameras or something like that. That's uh, great. I can tell. You can that tell camera's gonna fucking kill that guy. I just know it. <laughs> um, it could, I, I don't know. I'm. I don't feel any safer from this message. Is what I'm getting at. On the other, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna keep but I've always been one. the. Okay, I'm not going to live my life in fear. Yeah, I'm not this either. This little petty and I motherfucker would... that shot some people in Madden is not going to change my life. This the same thing that we had on the uh, the button smasher team group channel. Yeah, we uh, discussed this in our private this, channel. Yeah, we did, and I'll just take it back to the fact that like if some motherfucker decides he's going to try and ruin packs, like I'm not going to fucking run away. Like, I'm going to fucking head towards this guy. Like, this is not what the video game industry is about. And we need fuckers that are going to stop it. Because we already get enough flack for shit like that. Like, violence and stuff in video games. We already get enough shit. And Oh my god, can you imagine if this, instead of being a Madden tournament, had been... Um, like a Grand Theft Auto or like no, a no. PUBG or something? Like a no, PUBG or Fortnite? Not Fortnite. What's the one that's an actual shooter? It's super popular. PUBG. No, no, no. There's unknown about Old, Older than that. Older than that. Oh, uh... You're not. talking about not Call of Duty. It is uh, wow. There are people literally screaming at us right now. It is uh, Counter Strike. Yes, Counter Strike is still a huge esport. Oh, it's giant. And that's almost more we'd expect something like this to happen. You really would because it's all um, about weapons and. You know, in the Madden tournament, yeah, there was there was a lot on the line and stuff like that. But there's other games out there that are bigger. That have it doesn't major, matter if it's it, a million dollar pod. It you don't, it's just, not, you don't, you don't fucking someone. kill somebody over it. I don't care what the what the stakes are. It's just never appropriate. I I'm <laughs> I was surprised hearing there was a Madden tournament. I'm not gonna lie. It's weird. So, but uh, we will keep you updated about packs, and if anything goes down, hopefully this won't be the last podcast. Yeah, and if not, Zach's gonna promise to go out and blaze of glory. I promise to go out and blaze of glory. Um, so yeah, that brings us to the end of this segment. I know you guys are saying, where the fuck is your tech talk? We're going to skip that this week, guys, because we've already finished our whiskey. And we're stressed. That's true. And I need to pack my packs. I need to drive half hour. So. All right. All right. We'll be right back, guys. dog in my office and I did not know that um, alright Tim I'm going to kick this off this week you might recognize a theme here a very distant theme but a theme I'm going to go ahead and introduce the Jerusalem Stone go ahead and let them talk about it and let them introduce it introduce the Jerusalem Stone Jerusalem. hi I'm Michael Gerbitz I am passionate about Israel 
So much so that I moved here from America with my family 10 years ago. For decades, I've been deeply concerned and frustrated by how Israel suffers from media bias, false narratives, distortions, and lies. I felt that I had to do something, and I knew I could make a difference. So I founded United with Israel, a global grassroots pro-Israel online community. Thanks to you, UWI has grown to become the world's largest pro-Israel movement, advocating for the people, country, and land of Israel. I'm constantly pushing myself to do more. So it's only natural that I've been looking for that next great idea that's going to take my work to an entirely new level. Well, I found it. I believe so strongly in this idea that I'm focusing all of my energy on it. I'm partnering with an award-winning filmmaker who shares my passion. Together, we're going to make a film that has the power to change world perception of Israel once and for all. To talk more about this film, I'd like to introduce you to Rick Magda, the filmmaker who I'll be working with on this amazing project. Thanks, Michael. You're enjoying the beautiful views of Jerusalem, and I'm here in New York City. As a filmmaker, I've worked on numerous movies, television programs, and marketing films. I've read hundreds of feature film scripts, and I've never seen anything that has excited me like this incredible story. This full-length documentary feature will take us to different parts of the world, connecting the dots of a I like mystery the Game that of will lead us back totally Game of to what the ancient mystics have called the center of the universe, Jerusalem. <laughs> Why Jerusalem? Well, there's a reason that the word Jerusalem means city of peace. And underneath that city lies the answer. Throughout history, every single empire has fought for control of this spot. It's been at the center of world attention and physical conflict for Jews, Muslims, Christians, for literally thousands of years. The question is why? Now you're about to find out, and I assure you, the answers will blow your mind. In this city lies a secret, one that dates back to the dawn of creation. I mean, one that will impact humanity in the most profound bit. way and bring all of us together in a spirit of unity. This film will change your perceptions, but not only about Israel. It's going to change how you look at yourself and the entire world. Imagine having the key to unlock your greatest good, your greatest power, and limitless potential. After watching this film, Wait, you'll what? see yourself in a way that you never imagined. We're reaching out to you because we need they your help that to make all. this not film a reality. The first phase of production includes completing the research, writing the script, and many other pre-production items of youth. that are needed to get this project off the ground. I'm so excited about this project, and I believe so strongly in it, because I know it was. will make I just have to point a difference. Out, that was weird. A huge difference. It will not only create a new appreciation for this land, but it will shatter the walls that divide us. Your support will help Israel and the entire world in more ways than you could ever imagine. Please, help make this dream a reality. Your impact will be felt for generations to come. That's interesting, but it's like really ambiguous. It is. I don't know. It's a documentary, though. I'm, I, I like those. Okay. So they're looking for fifty thousand U.S. dollars. Mm -hmm. Forty-one days ago. Okay. At fourteen thousand four hundred sixty-nine. Not a bad start. Um, one hundred twenty-four backers. Mm -hmm. Fifty dollars gets you to be a part of the team, um, which gets you uh, progress of the film as it evolves. Um, hundred dollars gets you the honorary crew member. Okay. Um, Either of those levels get you a copy of the film, even digitally? No. Okay. What, All what? previous awards, plus a printed copy of the official production script signed by the actors, 250. Uh huh. Film, silver, peace coin, you get a coin. I just want to watch the movie. Invitation to the world premiere screening. Okay, that way I get to watch the movie. It's a thousand dollars. Dang. Associate producer credit. I, I might is wait five till Redbox. Just saying. There is literally one of those taken at five grand. Wow. Okay. Um. Interesting, but like. Strange. Yeah, it's just very ambiguous there in the middle. Like it'll unlock your secret potential and change your life, and doesn't say at all how. 
I mean, I, I know just because I've studied the history. If you're, a, if you read the um, Christian theology, you know that the end times is all centered around that area. It's literally the apocalypse yeah. started by that. What is underneath Jerusalem? But we will get should into we that. Start, we should start digging holes in Jeru- Jerusalem. Ah, uh, yeah, you can go ahead and try that. And see how that goes for you. You probably get some uh, heavily automatic weapons pointed at you. But um, I'll be like, guys, guys, guys. I'm just working for Satan here. Let's get back more to our wheelhouse. Let's okay. talk about some video games. Right. So we're we're going up to uh, to Fig, um, which is a Kickstarter platform where you can either back or um, invest. And this game Fuck is Fuck Incognito Gangsters. So Starflight is like a, a real old school game, but you haven't played this or no? Um, I watched someone play it when I was a kid, and it was kind of amazing. No, are you having me play this? I am, but I'm going to talk about okay. it for a second. All right. Just so the original Starflight and Starflight 2 were kind of the mass effect of their days. You would explore galaxies, meet alien civilizations. Um, it was really cool and way ahead of its time as far as like what it was doing. And it, it Well, I will let you play it now because it actually inspired some modern day game developers. Okay. Maybe. 32 years ago. That's a long time. Those fucking graphics are amazing, man! They actually were for the time. Yeah, no, back for the day, that was actually really good. Showing a bunch of different alien races. Oh, shit! Fuck! We're starting over again, guys! Starflight is really an interactive science fiction novel. You know, there's. I'm gonna pause this really quick. Just so you guys know. Fig really sucks at inter- uh, putting video in. Just gonna say. All right, sorry. It's combat exploration. You two were watching. Resource collection. I know that's a problem. All the things you would expect in a space-themed game. There's even a huge. Was it a coaster? Generated universe, for example. I want to star fighter but coaster. The thing that's that really unique and dumbass. exciting about uh, it is like I know you any don't remember good that, no, science I do. fiction novel. Ghostbusters. I think if you ask 10 different people what their take is on Starflight, you'll get 10 different answers. But at the end of the day, Starflight is uh, its a single-player sci-fi RPG sandbox where you can reveal the story any way you want, just because you can go anywhere you want in the galaxy. Starflight 3 Huge takes galaxy, place man. in a whole new section of the galaxy. There's still a connection to the story in Game 1 and Game 2. There's some of the same alien races, for example. But there's a whole new set of alien races with their own motivations, their own relationships with each other, their own uh, alien perspectives and cultures. But it's still that same central idea that was at the core of Starflight 1 and 2. Games often have the trappings of science fiction, but they don't offer what we love most about science fiction. And what we love most is really an insight. You come away with some kind of understanding, some inspiration. That's what science fiction is for those of us that truly love it. We're crowdfunding through FIG so that we can go through a proper discovery, pre-production, production cycle, basically the full critical path for Starflight 3. You know, it's not just about the money. When you crowdfund a game, and we learned this when we did Toe Jam and Earl, you hear stories and testimonials from people, sometimes very personal ones. And we heard some of these from friends of ours, people um, who are now big in the industry that we didn't even know were fans of Starflight. The best computer we had was my dad's computer. And and we had this sort of shed in the back that he had turned into this This sort of nerd den. I'd actually sneak out. I found a way to break into the place. And I'd break in in the middle of the night and I'd I'd loaded Starflight onto this thing. And I'd I'd just play it until I, I couldn't keep my eyes open. Everybody wants cause and effects. Like SimCity is a great example of cause and effect. And then on the opposite side, we have Ryan the Fargo of uh, Bard's Tale, game, which mm-hmm. were the least amount of cause and effect, and those failed as a category. To me, I, I just keep sort of keep coming back to that as being what they did so great with Starflight. You'd see these sequences like the 3D generated, you know, terrain when you zoom down, and that's the inspiration. That's the thing that drove you know, the next developer to see something and go, oh, I could make a whole game on a 3D world. You see, this is what I think a game like Starflight did. It just sets fire to the imagination and it has developers all over the world saying, I want to make games. Like, you don't understand. Like, I can say it, but I, it is it is absolutely certain that if Starflight did not exist, 
I would not be a game developer. Like, if Starflight didn't exist, Gearbox wouldn't exist. That means Borderlands would not exist. It's fucking incredible. It really sparked people's imagination. It was way ahead of its time. Yeah. It was like Star Trek. Um, it's definitely progenitor of uh, Mass Effect or No Man's Sky. Just the idea of exploring the galaxy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's really cool. They're making a new one. Um, they are asking for $800,000. And I'm not exactly here how that breaks down as far as backers with a reward versus investors. Um, they're currently at 19% of their goal. They just launched. Um, trying to see that. I guess two days maybe. Because they got 21, 28 days and 20 hours left. They're already at 1,251 backers. Um, if you want to invest, I actually looked into that because I was sort of curious. Because I, I sort of think this one would probably make a good return on investment. Really? Um, not like amazing, but I think you'd at least make your money back. Um, it's $250 for one share. That's not bad. No, I was sort of looking at that. But to uh, pledge with just a, like a backing level, like a reward, $20 gets you the game. That's um, not bad at all. No. Which will probably be a little bit more. It might be 20 or 25 or 30. Um, premium digital, uh, you get the art book and the soundtrack, basically. Uh, ultimate digital, but moving up to the top backing level that's not an investment level, you're looking at five grand with no backers so far out of 10. Um, a signed box copy of Starflight 3, uh, extra digital copy on Steam, name and credits, exclusive digital treasure map, digital art book, digital soundtrack, backer exclusive train vehicle. Beta access, alpha access, backer exclusive in-game ship, big exclusive signed prints, Starflight 3 t-shirt, sit in a Starflight design, mean, design team meeting, help design an alien ship, help name a planet, help name a star system, and bite to the launch party. If you buy that level, please name your planet the Plug and Play Podcast Planet. Yes, please. That'd be awesome. So yeah, that's uh, the Kickstarter I wanted to... Well, it's not a Kickstarter, the FIG. The crowdfunding um, program I wanted to, to feature this week. And uh, when we come back, I will bring you up to speed on one that we backed in the past. All right. Well, uh, for my final Kickstarter this week, guys, I'm not even going to name it. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and play it. Yeah, I'm curious about this one. Oh, this is bad. Hi. I'm Anthony Michael Hall. I'm here to tell you about my new movie, Sugar Babes. Oh, Hi, boy. sweetheart. Guys, you know, online dating is so popular right now. One in six people are using it. And that's a lot of hearts involved. You know, it generates over two billion a year. And that's a lot of money. Oh yeah. So why is it so popular? Money. Well, she <laughs> said it. That's an efficient way to find viable candidates, guys, isn't it? You see, just a few strokes on your keyboard and voila, you're dating. It's your babes that random guy women like just going through the room divorced, stroke to him. himself into this scene. You guys can't see this. He meets some highly qualified women who give him a real run for his money. And it's like that game that we tried to play that was so, so bad. Super seducer. Which, yeah. by He's the way, they have a number two now. Of course. Oh, God. <laughs> I got invited to a uh, review it. Richards I'm not doing that. The legendary Danny Trejo, who plays my good friend, Father oh, Which is funny because I like Danny. You might ask Danny. yourself, what does a Catholic priest know about online dating? What? What? You'd be surprised. Sugar Babes will be directed by Charlie Mathow, who made Freaky Deaky and a lot of other great comedies. So if you like cats, chili cook-offs, body cams, a holy water dispensing machete, and a firing squad, you're going to love this movie. We'll see you guys on set. All these, like, middle-aged Okay, easy, women girls. Are easy. Two hands at a time. Yeah, that's terrible. Oh, no. It's not good. But it was so fucking bad, I had to highlight it. So this is a comedy movie. It's a comedy movie. Production of a movie called Sugar Babes. Oh, the Danny movie starring Trejo, Anthony why? Michael Hall and Danny Trejo. Danny. Danny. It's got $2 so far. <laughs> what? That's it's got, it? It's got $2. Literally just $2? $2. It is our least funded pl- uh, project on okay. Plug and Play. I-, I made fun of that video, but it was at least fairly well produced. Like, it probably cost... Hailing out of Los Angeles, California, $2. and guaranteed major movie stars. I want my two dollars. Two dollars out of four hundred thousand. Wow! With fifty-two days ago and two backers, that means emailed thank you note signed by <laughs> the producer or screenwriter of <laughs> got Sugar two Babes. Thank you notes so far is twenty-five dollars. <sighs> so that means they literally have. Wait, how the fuck is that even possible? Mm. Two dollars backed 
is not even their lowest level. I don't know. They had That's to, weird. They asked for half their money back. I guess. What's the top level? I'm curious. Oh, 10,000 US dollars. That's the reward number four, ladies and gentlemen, because they are not Do classy. all those middle-aged women come behind me and stroke me like they a did in the video? A short, non-speaking role in Sugar Babes movie. Yes, Pledger okay. Must it doesn't pay... say that maybe those women will come behind me and stroke me. Exactly. Pledger must pay his or her own transportation lodging Lame. to and from film location. It's like L.A. You can't afford a trip to L.A. after giving you ten grand. Tim, if you just want to jack off for $5,000, you can get a four- to five-hour, one-day on-set observation of the filming of Sugar Babes. Pledger must pay for his or her own transportation lodging to and from set. And paper towels. And paper towels. If you, ladies and gentlemen... No, would, just stop. Would love, I mean, I no, no, there's only one more level. This right, literally fine. has four. All right. If you would love to get a copy and sign or a signed script by one of the members of the cast, including Danny, mm-hmm. it's $115. It also gets you an on-site picture of the cast during the filming and an emailed autographed picture of a member of the cast. That's all I got. All right. What do you got for us, man? So, earlier this year, we talked about sound reactive LED masks. Um, masks you put on that uh, strobe with the music. And there's like the Obama mask, there's a fox, there's a uh, robot, there's a skull. A bunch of cool masks. And we were excited I to. I have the skull. Maybe. Maybe. Um, so, we we're excited about this for PAX parties. And the deliverable date was May 2018. And as we warn you, like. Deliverable dates, like things come up for production, like dates get pushed back. And we understood that. But we thought that between May and September was enough time. To make sure we got them for packs. Yes. Um, and this particular Kickstarter actually sold an early access one that was deliverable in April. What? <laughs> yeah. Those people got super screwed. So obviously the way I'm talking about this, we have not got our masks. Um, and, you know, Zach's been asking me, hey, hey, Tim. Tim, where's our mask? Where's our mask? The pack's coming. I'm fucking excited for my goddamn skull mask. I want to walk around and... I want to walk around and just do things. As you should be. Yep. So, um, this update happened just... What's today? The 20... 29th. The 28th. So, yesterday. Yep. As of the recording. Update 18. It's finally happening. All the masks were sent the 27th of August from our warehouse. Please check your spam folder if you don't receive your tracking number. Um, then a bunch of thank you for your support, blah, blah, blah. There's uh, 170 comments. I'm going to read you just a couple. No tracking number. Not surprised. Uh, number 1849. No tracking number. No tracking number, spam or otherwise. Did not receive tracking number. Did not receive shipping email. No tracking number. No tracking email. No spam. No mask. Thanks for letting me know about the shipping. It's not like a request a refund or anything. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't received anything yet. What's going on? Um, has anyone actually received the tracking number? No tracking number. Check span. Um, okay, I'm going to scroll down a little bit to get to a different type of message. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, so there's so many I can't even get to it. But some people did actually get their masks. But never got a tracking number. And some people got their masks and they were broken. So. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah. Oh. So Zach is going to actually go check the mailbox. We have I have to ship. fucking drive to go check a mailbox. I think I have something else too. So it's okay. There is a very small chance. I would put it at about one in a hundred. So that's actually decent odds because enough people have been getting it. It's possible we could have a Pax Miracle and have two functional masks. Oh, my God. It's what possible. If, what if one of, only know. one of ours is functional? So, here's the thing. We could we could choose who gets the functional mask because the, the unit is transferable. Yeah. We, we, could get, take, we could switch it back and forth. We could take turns. <laughs> take turns. Hey, Tim! Well, I want to be functional, too, man! <laughs> to go one step further, we did get a, a mask for a friend. If two out of the three are functional, we could actually have two functioning masks for packs. Who's the third friend? Megan. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I don't I remember that. Well, it's because you didn't... I dealt with it. Yeah, you dealt with I it. I backed with this. I, this is my money being wasted right now. Well, I think you paid me for it. I your, did pay you for mine. Well, I... Yeah. So this is just a cautionary tale. 
Like when you invest in a startup, you can get, I mean, there's all levels of competency. It's supposed to be. What? Hold on. What? So I, I, I don't. I just fucked up. Never mind. It said it was going to be 107 tomorrow. And I was like, what? that's not a fucking possible. Not, that's not according to the weather today. So anyway, I doubt the masks. It, at the, I'm going to check. I want my fucking mask for PAX. But here's the thing. It's going to literally like show up <laughs> like two days after we get to PAX. Like, and I know. And we can't get back to get them? No. And I'm not going to ask anyone to bring them up to us. That's ridiculous. I mean, I might. I know Dale, you would. can you drive out to Seattle? <laughs> I'll get you a house contract. Anyway, that's our Kickstarter for this week. Let's go on to what games you haven't been playing. What games you've been playing, Tim? <laughs> so I foolishly I agreed to review the Gardens Between um, because I don't have enough articles to write this month. Um, but I am enjoying it. It's on the Switch and PS4 and I think Xbox One as well. I'm playing the um, Switch version, and it's pretty cool. Um, you you play as two characters who are like going into their memories and there's these little islands with like pieces from your memory so like if you're thinking about like one island will have for example a tv and like okay. a video game system and a, a vhs um vcr and you will go around the island trying to get to the top where you want to put a sphere of light into like a receptacle that's the goal okay okay but you don't exactly control the characters you control the flow of time Oh, dear God. So they start walking up, up the path, but they'll get blocked by obstacles. And by reversing time and, and manipulating the environment... Oh, dear God. No. But it's beautiful, Zach. No, it's not. Yes, it no, is. this is fucking stupid. I'll, I'll I'll make a video, and you'll at least see that it's pretty. Nope. And Zach's out. The other game you <laughs> this might... This game's fucking dumb. Okay. The other game you might like. I'm going to pull it for you right now. You're going to hear oh, its little... God damn it. Um, this it's is, a me, Mario. Woo-hoo! It's called Hold Down. Hold Down. Hold Down. So, do you see these blocks? Look like sort of. Dude, like te- it's fucking Tetris. It's not though. It's more like um, what's that game? Uh, Breakout. General the Jousting. No, Breakout. Never heard of that. You shoot balls at these bricks. What? So this one has a one on it, right? So that okay. means one ball is going to destroy it. You see but how the numbers why, why was there two of them shot out then? Well, that, that's not the point. The the bricks have numbers on them. That's how many times it takes. So seven for that one on the left. Right. So you want to bank shots to get like I don't know. So the balls bounce. Balls bounce, and you want bouncing if the, balls. If the ball, if the bricks get to the line, you die. Why was it red? I don't know, but see, if that that red line, if the if the bricks get up there, you die. So you want to. You want to kill them before they get mm-hmm. to that. Yeah. Oh, I see. But okay. I just ran out of shots, so I lost this level. Okay, so is, it a, is this a uh, free to play? No, it's four bucks. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. Um, let me start from the beginning. So they're all ones, I think. I can't so see. You start with all ones, and you gotta have a little bit of strategy. Like I'm gonna go down this way, I think, and kind of try to get as many bounces as I can. That was pretty good. And then I'm gonna bank it over here. It's a good one-handed uh, game, I feel. I mean, it but, looks fun. Um, it's got cute music. Of course, you don't have to have the music. You can turn it off. Now, the real question is, what does your wife think of this? She's not impressed. Really? Yeah. It's not tetris enough. Like, she's not controlling the blocks falling down. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that one. Anyway, that's... Uh, I keep going to call it downhole, but it's hold down, I think. Um, so what the fuck is it called again? Hold down. Okay. You, you shoot holes. Okay. Um, <laughs> we're gonna see so many games at Pack Sack. Oh god damn it! And I'm excited. Now you're like, whatever. But I'm super excited. I'm I'm optimistic. There's a game I'd never heard of that I'm so excited to see now. It's, it's coming out actually while we're at Pax. Like I could literally buy it. I'm excited to go check out the games I did not get emails for. The Messenger is like a throwback to Ninja Gaiden. And East- Artifact. Artifact. What's that? The Dota card. Oh, yeah, yeah. That'll be huge, I'm I think. I'm super fucking excited. I'm going to make your ass go over there and get fucking free codes. Damn it. Bring it back to me. Every day. Tim, <sighs> Tim, what are you doing? I'm trying to 
trying to calm down from the peace and the quiet. But Tim, go to fucking artifact and give me a goddamn card. Yeah. All right. <sighs> let's talk about games coming out this week. All right. I'm just going to run through this list really quick. We need to get out of here. Blood Strangers, PC, PS4, Switch, Bow to Blood, VR, PS4, De Blob to Switch, Catch and Release, VR, PS4, Dead, or Donut County, sorry. Do not. I want to play that. What the fuck is this? Donut, PC, Count, PS4. Donut County, you play as a hole oh, dear that God. sucks things into it, and it's only like an hour and a half long. It sounds oh, perfect man. for me. Yep. Downward Spiral, Horus Station, VR, PS4. A lot of fucking VR games this week, guys. Weird. Final Pro Wrestling World PS4, Ferns Gate PS4 Vita, Gate of Doom PS4, Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate Switch, Patio Box PS4, Rocket League Ultimate Edition PS4, Switch, Xbox One, Chiquito Soul Eater PC. Chiquito Soul Eater? Chikondo? Okay, I gotta Chik- see this. I'm not Chik- looking at it right now. Chikondo Soul Eater PS4, Xbox One, okay. Splash Blast Panic, PS4, <laughs> Xbox One. Sounds like a Strange bad diaper. Bra- <laughs> yeah, it does. Strange Brigade, PC, PS4, Xbox One, Sunless Sea, Zoomineer Edition, Okay. PS4. Switchblade, PS4. Yeah. Should be on the fucking Switch. It should. The Golf Club 2019 featuring PGA Tour, PS4, Torn, VR, PS4, Victor Vran, Overkill Edition, Switch, Viking Days VR, PS4, The Walking Dead, the complete final season, Nintendo Switch. First season. Uh, Nope, the complete, oh yeah, yep, the complete first season. That is stupid. The final season is out right now on everything else besides the Switch, apparently. Warhammer 40,000, Inquisitor Martyr, PS4, Xbox One, Yakuza Kwame 2, which is Yakuza 2, I believe, PS4. That brings us to the end of this week's episode, guys. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yep. Ah, oh, sweet. Awesome. Uh, don't forget to check us out at facebook.com forward slash plug and play show, Twitter and Instagram at plug and play cast, youtube.com forward slash plug and play gamer. And until next week, don't forget to prime and shine. And seek mental help if you need it. And we'll see you at PAX. Name for the episode? Shit, I just talked! <laughs> what are you gonna do with that? <laughs> Nothing, it's gonna happen! Alright.